everyone, my name is Cheng Li. I'm the director and the senior fellow of the Brookings Institution's John L. Sunton China Center in Washington, DC. It's my pleasure to welcome you to this fireside chat with my friend, the Honorable Jing Li Qing, current inaugural president of the Asia Infrastructure Investment Bank. President Jing and I are similar in many respects. We are both ethnically Chinese, born in Sunan, um, uh, with the same ancestral home of Ningbo, China. We both grew up in hardship during the Cultural Revolution, attended college after Deng Xiaoping's reform and opening up, majored in English or Western literature, and came to the United States for graduate level studies in the 1980s. Now he serves as a multilateral development bank and I work at the, an American think tank. As students of Western literature, we both appreciate the great contributions of Western civilization. Please allow me to use this opportunity to thank the DiFi Economic Forum for inviting us and to congratulate our Greek friends on their <laughs> bicentennial. As part of the brief introduction to our speaker, I want to say that I have long admired President Jing for his exceptionally rich experience spanning the private and public sector in his early career in China, promoting financial reform as chairman of China's first joint venture investment bank and as vice minister of China's Ministry of Finance. I'm particularly inspired by his instrumental roles in multi multinational development banks, such as the World Bank, the Asia Development Bank, and now the AIIB. President Jing, it's honor and privilege for me to ask you questions and to hear your insights at this challenging and uncertain time in world affairs. Now, uh, President Jing, you always emphasize the importance of global governance of the bank. When you began to serve as its president, and when you were re-elected last summer to serve a second term of five years, especially with the well-known pledge to be lean, clean, and green, with over 100 members and 103 members exactly at the end of last year, the AIB has become the second largest MDP, MDB after the World Bank. Now, uh, how crucial is governance to AIB's mission. President Jin, the floor is yours. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mr. Chen, my good friend. And thank you for such nice words. Um, I'm delighted to attend this Delphic Economic Forum. Um, you know, I visited Greece uh, more than 20 years ago, and uh, I'm sorry, I could not go back uh, even though uh, Greece is the founding member of our bank, uh, but because of COVID-19, I'm stuck here in Beijing, I couldn't travel. But I will try to do that as soon as possible. You know, it, it's interesting to note that we are discussing something in Delphi uh, Economic Forum related to China. Um, you know, at the very outset, there were wild speculations about Chinese intention to set up the put up at such a kind of bank when there were already a quite number of multilateral development banks. And uh, uh, I think skepticism, you know, doubts, questions abound as to the, uh, first of all, the nature of such a kind of bank. And uh, very interesting to note, uh, perhaps you know, there was somebody who's based in Beijing and according to FT, which reported uh, pretty ex uh, extensively about, uh, about uh, the setting up of this bank. And some people in Beijing scoffed 
at the very idea of China intending to create such a kind of a bank. And they question, do they have talents, whether they can do it? And if this article said, perhaps tongue in cheek, but maybe this time China will be able to do it. So looking back, I wonder whether FT consulted Delphi Oracle. Thank you. <laughs> and, <laughs> you see, and uh, you, the, the question is about the governance. You see, it's very uh, clear. Without setting a, far, a high level of governance structure, it makes no sense to set up such kind of bank. Because you see, uh, some people said, well, China would like to have a bank and uh, promote unilateralism in the name of a multilateralism. China, wants, China has an axe to grind. China wants to do this, do that. You know, I answer these kind of questions by asking them the question. If we do not set up this bank by international best practice, by the multilateral institutions governance structure, what, what is it for? Because if China really wants to have its influence, it has China Development Bank, China Action Bank. The combined assets overseas is more than the combined assets of all the development banks put together. So I, when I was given the task to set this bank, I make it very much clear. If we want to do this, we do it by high standard, right? Because only by setting a multilateral institution in the true sense of the word could China really have its role to be played in the international financial economic arena. So the idea is to set up a such a bank to improve the connectivity within Asia and with the rest of the world. That's the whole idea. It's very straightforward. It's very simple. Let me stop here. Well, thank you so much, uh, President Jing. High standard, international standard. You certainly set the, uh, uh, that bar. You know, um, you, you fulfill your promise. Um, now, one of the most urgent and important tasks for multilateral development banks at the present is to help countries mitigate the effects of the pandemic and achieve a quick recovery. According to a story in Time magazine in February, the AIB provided a, a pivotal, a, a pivotal the, the last year to embrace pandemic relief, uh, quickly allocating uh, 7 billion out of uh, 13 billion coronavirus war chest to help its members fight the virus. President Jing, could you tell us more about what AIB has done on that front? You see, uh... Looking back, when I was uh, entrusted with the task to set up this bank, we engage all of the uh, founding members, including you know, all of the European shareholders to set this bank. Uh, I, as you see, I worked uh, on the board of the World Bank for six years and five years in the management team of ADB. And I can claim some knowledge about the operating operate, operations of the Modular Development Bank. And in particular, I like to highlight, highlight the importance of uh, the experience uh, given to us by EBRD. After the uh, Soviet Union's collapse in 1990, and the European countries started to set up this EBRD, uh, with certainly uh, the United States joining. And the uh, mandate was to uh, create a bank whose mission uh, is to uh, finance the transition from the former systems to the market economy. And you see, the mandate was very narrow. So 15 years on, uh, the mission completed. And some people even talk about shutting it down. But how could you kill a boy of a teenager boy, which is doing so well, or kill a teenager girl who is doing so well. So finally, they gave up this idea and they tried to expand the mandate of EBRD. Now, I, I learned from this lesson. So when we draft the Arctic Agreement, we worked with the European members. Now, I refer to the experience of EBRD. And I said, based on the Asian countries' experience, including that of China, 
infrastructure can pave the path for sustained development over the long run. That is why we take infrastructure as the main theme or main, uh, main theme, a main a business of this bank. But keep in mind the experience of EBRD are added the words. The mandate of the AIIB is to finance the broad-based economic and social development through investment in infrastructure and other productive sectors. So in the negotiation, some people ask me, the chief negotiators ask me, Mr. Jin, what do you mean by other productive sectors? We are supposed to work on creating a bank for infrastructure. And I said, in other productive sectors means other productive sectors. Now you all understand that healthcare is such an important part of the other productive sector. You can build all this physical infrastructure and they could be beautiful uh, and they could be built with the uh, latest of our technology, right? Rapid rail, modern airport, seaport, container berth with AI uh, technology. But if the nation's sick, can you take advantage of this? Nothing. That is why my view is healthcare is very, very important. Only a productive nation, a healthy nation is productive. So we had no difficulty expanding our business into the healthcare area. So we quickly uh, put up the uh, crisis recovery facility in the amount of $13 billion. And we provide uh, budget support and the policy lending to the countries who were grappling with the COVID-19. Of course, in most of cases, we work in collaboration with the World Bank, with ADB and others uh, through co-financing. That is why, you see, a development bank must be able to respond, respond quickly. Under the extreme circumstances, not to respond is no option. That is why you can see the uh, potency of the artist agreement of this new bank. And I, I am very happy to see that the developing countries, the members really embrace this bank as one of the important partners, not just for infrastructure, but for some extreme cases. Well, it's really um, uh, visionary that uh, in the early, in the beginning of the AIB, you already emphasize public health and uh, it's part of, uh, you know, um, your uh, 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 objective. You mentioned about the developing country, but also you mentioned about, uh, you know, the, 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 the West uh, European countries. I think that that's really well said. Now, um, I also noticed that before, uh, even before COVID-19 pandemic, India was the largest beneficiary of AIB uh, lending in terms of both projects and also value. Now, has AIB made any urgent decisions or considering to make some major decisions to help India in light of the really extremely dire situation there now? Of course, of course. As you know, India accounts for one quarter of the AIB's lending to them and for the basic infrastructure, including uh, rural roads, subway, and, uh, and uh, uh, renewable energy, and all kinds of infrastructure uh, operations. And ever since the breakout of the COVID-19, we quickly processed uh, the loan to India in collaboration with the World Bank in the amount of $500 million. And we also give them uh, another uh, uh, support uh, is $750 million. Now, with this uh, uh, COVID-19 flaring up in the second wave, it's very, very seriously. We follow the situation with great concern. So actually, indeed, today we had a, we had a meeting. We want to follow up uh, the uh, lending to India by quickly put up a new uh, project to support India. Uh, this is uh, this is important not just because India is our member, but also because you see this dire situation in India would have serious implications for the neighboring countries like uh, Nepal, which is already in deep trouble. Bangladesh is crying out for help, and Pakistan might also be affected. Now, if the pandemic is not controlled in India, 
I think it would be quickly、uh, spread to the rest of the world, and then it would be serious problem. So、uh, we are taking quick actions, and、uh, I actually sent a message to Prime Minister Modi uh, uh, weeks ago, and、uh, he responded pretty positively, and he appreciates the support from our bank. And as you know, China is very, very generous, providing them with the oxygen and with other kind of medical equipment.、Uh, I think uh, uh, we we should、uh, lose no time in. Uh, crushing the virus in India. Well, thank you so much. Your quick response certainly reflects your vision and、uh, also the principle of the,、uh, your bank. Now, let me move to a different、um, uh, subject. And、uh, we know that AIB opened for business in 2016, shortly after the Paris Agreement was signed. Could you comment on the importance of international cooperation in、uh, tackling climate change? How has the AIB tried to make an important contribution, given that the green is one of your three key principles?、Uh, you see,、uh, when we were,、uh, you know, we started uh, uh, negotiating. Uh, we started negotiating the articles agreement for the bank、uh, after Spring Festival in 2014. You know, I relinquished my duty as chairman of CICC, and.、Uh, Devoted a,、uh, a whole time to the setting up of this bank, and、uh, Paris Agreement was uh, 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 became effective just a couple months before the、uh, bank was up and running. So throughout the whole process of negotiation, we kept climate change in our mind. It's、uh, it's I think it's uppermost in our mind, and, and I think uh, uh, in. In today's world, if we only think about infrastructure financing in a traditional way, without looking at environment issues, climate change, we will make a historical mistake. So、uh, we make it very much clear that、uh, the bank will not follow the beaten track of infrastructure investment、uh, done. Twenty, thirty, forty years ago, and we would finance infrastructure. Uh, which would be、uh, environmentally benign, which will not leave a big footprint in、uh, climate, and and、uh, indeed the infrastructure we finance should actually、uh, help the mitigation of climate change. So this was already deeply embedded in our uh, tech, uh, in our uh, thinking, and the、uh, corporate strategy, which was which was approved by the board last year. I、made it very much clear that by 2025 we would reach 50 percent、uh, of financing for climate change mitigation and adaptation. It's very clear we need to do a, a more and to deal with this global challenge. Oh, well said. Again, uh, uh, not only public health we discussed earlier, but also. Climate change is also a very important,、uh, you know,、uh, issues you wanted to、uh, deal with. I think certainly、um, it's very inspiring for us to know that. Now, now I want to move to infrastructure. Now, according to an、yeah. EU brief, a briefing on AIB、uh, released two months ago, the AIB is, is、uh, established early this year. Strategies for energy, transport, water, and the digital infrastructure sectors. And the sustainable cities are these AIB、mm. priority for the next ten years as the bank implements <laughs>、uh, its cooperative strategy and invest in infrastructure for tomorrow. This is also the the、uh, the program you want to emphasize. President Jing, could you elaborate on this? Especially, what does this renewed strategy mean for EU countries?、Um, yes, I can say so.、Um, Our infrastructure investment、uh, moving forward, looking forward to the next five or ten years, would uh, uh, help uh, Asian countries and non-Asian countries to deal with tough challenges. First of all, connectivity. Connectivity、uh, is important for the.、Uh, I think、uh, you can say the economy of scale, and、uh, connectivity can greatly、uh, facilitate. Cross-border investment and trade, 
and greatly improve the economic efficiency of all those members. And urban development is important. As you see, uh, rural to urban migration has been all the rage over the last decades. And uh, it would be pick up a momentum even further with the progress of poverty reduction. How could we prepare for the migration through improving the urban infrastructure, building smarter cities? And all this is very much important. Now, what is the relationship between the traditionally defined infrastructure with climate change? And uh, I would say the climate financing would permeate our financing in basic infrastructure. Anything we do should deal with climate change, uh, not to say the least, the renewable energy, right? As you know, we don't finance mm -hmm. coal projects or any project which is functionally related to coal. We, we don't have any projects in our pipeline which have something to do with coal. So uh, renewable projects definitely are infrastructure projects and helping with the mitigation of climate change. And a smart grid is certainly important. And uh, subway, um, mass transit systems, uh, and uh, uh, airport, seaport build uh, with the AI technology with efficiency, all would reduce GHG emissions. So you cannot separate the financing for uh, climate change from the infrastructure for tomorrow. So we should have a different kind of you know, uh, infrastructure. It's not the same thing as people did 20 years yeah. ago, 30 years ago. Yeah, that's great. And um, thank you for uh, explaining in, a, in such a detailed well, way. Now, uh, we have a few minutes left. Uh, my last question is uh, that uh, uh, mm -hmm. you once uh, compared the AIB and the China's Build and Road Initiative to two engines mm -hmm. of an aircraft. Some critics argue that such an emphasis on infrastructure benefits China and especially Chinese SOEs more than any other stakeholders of AIB. Would you please respond to this concern or criticism? You already mentioned in the beginning, in the, uh, in the first yeah, opening remark, but I wanted to you specifically address that. Uh, you see, I have clarified the difference between BNNI and AIIB on numerous times. Yes. But let me repeat it again. Okay. First of all, both initiatives were proposed by the Chinese leader. And they share the same benefit uh, uh, or objective of promoting global connectivity, regional and global integration, economic integration. Uh, however, the mechanism of BNNI and AIB are different. BNNI, to my understanding, is the platform or international platform for cooperation. And any participating countries could join, can develop infrastructure. And the president, she said, BNNI is guided by a broad consultation, joint construction, and shared benefit. It's very clear China is not doing this just for its own interests. How about AIB? AIB is a multilateral development bank. Its gene is in the gene pool of the multilateral development institutions, the World Bank and all the institutions later on, which were patented on the World Bank, uh, this, this global institution. If there's any difference, we are set up in the 21st century with a focus on infrastructure and other productive sectors. And uh, the, actually the question was raised to me by uh, by some senior officials in Europe, when I visited some of these countries, they asked me, and what is the relationship between BNI and AIB? I said, they are the two engines and an aircraft. Yeah. Uh, the aircraft can fly. Uh, and the people pursue the question further. What is the aircraft? I said, <laughs> the, aircraft, <laughs> the aircraft is the international community. Well said, uh, President Jing. <laughs> the time has come to bring this conversation to a close.
This has been a fantastic discussion on such important topics. On behalf of the Dai Fair Economic Forum, I want to thank you, President Jing, for your candid, comprehensive, concise, and stimulating remarks. I remember you once quoted a French saying in a public talk. I quote here, confidence comes, uh, com I'm sorry, confidence goes away like a horse, but comes back to on foot. I should tell you yes. that I have full confidence in you and in AIIB, especially in the great service of you and your team as you promote regional and the global peace and the prosperity. Thank you, President Jing. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you so much. Yeah, wonderful opportunity. Okay.